This is the Mercedes S580, and I'm starting outside the car for a POV because you really do need to see this. In the back is kind of the point of a car like this. When we had, let's see if I can get the footrest to go up. When we had the Genesis G90, this was the point as well. So this has the full executive package on it. There you can see the calf rest is coming up. You can also see that I am entirely too big for this car at six foot three. Uh, my wife is 5'7". She was almost right, but even she was a little bit big for this car. I have a screen here. I have a screen here because we have the entertainment package, but I also have a screen here that actually does come out and I can control everything that the seat would do from this little screen. I'm not going to spend too much time there, but that does that. Heated, cooled, massaged, this whole seat moves around. These are actually part of the entertainment package. These are wireless, noise canceling, of course, piano black, ugh, headphones from Mercedes. Of course, you're spending $160,000 on this car. A couple of pairs of included headphones would be nice. Because I'm in Mercedes, of course, I have a seat looking control setup here for my seat. But again, I can do whatever I'd really like in this situation and I'm going to see actually let's go right rear and can I get this to come out sometimes it doesn't want to come out I'll leave it in there for now there it is okay so look I have a whole screen here and I can do kind of whatever I'd like right here while I'm at it I'm going to just play look I've got a duplicate of the screen up there I can decide what I'd like to work on of course, if you go into the home button a couple of times, you can get everything. You can plug your device in however you would like and have it talk to your specific screen. You could watch your personal Netflix or whatever you can pull in off your phone. Hey, here's massage. Let's get massage going on this guy. There we go. That made me happier. Yep, that's happening. You, you can see that it's happening and I can feel that it's happening. Of course, I can control the left seat as well. I can move this seat forward and back. All of my controls are duplicated here. Of course, I could reach forward, but why would you reach forward when you can just use the tablet? That's just better. I mean, come on, this is the point, isn't it? So I wanted you to see this seat first because of course, a lot about this, th place in this car is really the back seat is the place to be. You can see all the various speakers in here. This has the uh, 4D Burmeister system. I can control this sunroof cover here and the whole sunroof from my side of things. I can actually separate myself from the front of the cabin. They can control their own up there. We'll talk about that when I'm up there. But I wanted you to see this to start. And now I should clamber out of here. I will get this seat to close. The key thing, though, about this seat closing is that when it's open all the way, it actually blocks the passenger side mirror from the driver, which is something that is a little difficult when you're driving. Of course, I worry about it as a driver because I like to drive, but this is the place to be if you're in this car. Now let's go get the driving done. Hey, look, pop out handles. Normally when you walk up with the key, the handles pop out on their own. Hey, look, I can see that mirror now because the seat has reset itself as I walked around the car. One of the many things I want you to notice here, let's start the engine up, is this has this 3D gauge cluster. Now, I'm not honestly sure how well you're going to be able to tell the way I'm looking at it, if it will actually even transfer and be visible on the GoPro. I hope that it is. But in case you can't tell, these two gauges appear to be on a different plane than whatever you have in the middle behind it. Now what's in the middle behind it, you can change that information. You know, it's our podcast or whatever's playing. But if you have the map or whatever, that map actually is more in focus at the bottom than it is at the top. It does create a 3D sense. But if you have anything else in there, it actually has a 3D effect where that is floating in space, but it's at a, a plane behind the two gauges. So this is all something that they offer you. Again, 160 thousand dollars here this car starts about 120 but this is the loaded out version what is this exactly well it is the s580 mercedes that means it is the four liter turbo version you can get a three liter with lesser horsepower with the s500 but why would you get the s500 you're in mercedes land in this one you get 496 horsepower 516 pound feet of torque which is a awfully good amount from this by turbo Oh, let's look at the piano black real quick. Piano black is everywhere, because that was what we were told was luxury. 
Um, I do have, of course, Apple CarPlay going right here, but I can go back to the home screen. There's map or home screen again. Go to comfort because this is the number one thing about a situation like this. I want to have a massage seat going while I drive this car. Because this is Mercedes, it has classic Mercedes interface. What I mean by that is Mercedes does not make this the windshield wiper stock. This is the actual way to go and to drive. I mention that because if you've only driven Mercedes, you're used to that. What I find fascinating is if you drive anything else like we do and you get into this, that feels weird. You end up dealing with this, trying to get the wipers to work. I've done it more than once in the cold this week. The genius there is if you're used to Mercedes, if you test drive anything else, you feel like the other cars are wrong. But if you're like us and you test drive everything, you get in this and you go, why is this backwards? But drive on the nine speed transmission, which yes, of course, does have paddles. I have to ask why a car like this has paddles because while it drives well, the point of this, as we already discussed, is not the driving. That's not really why you got this car. You got this car to just glide your way wherever you're going to go and ideally to have your passenger have an even better time than you're having. Now, we had that Genesis G90. We liked it very much. It is clearly modeled directly after this car all the way down to the adjustable LED lighting, the executive back seat, and yes, you can't smell it. It's not smell-o-vision, but this does have a scent that emanates every now and then. It's stored in the glove box and it fills its way through the cabin. That's all very nice. Of course, it's all stuff that Genesis did as well for uh, about a 60% discount at about $100,000. You get in this and you can tell that Mercedes has been doing this forever. There is a, a solidity and a build quality here that is very, very clear. Everything, even if it's this piano black that I don't like, it just seems like they got a better version than everybody else. It's like their part supplier was one level above everybody else's part supplier. It has that feeling. Now, that doesn't mean you didn't A, pay for it, or B, it will then be reliable. It might all go wrong. There's so much technology going on in here, there's a good chance it will go wrong. I had to scrub this screen before I started this so that you guys would not see anything but fingerprints. So we have these inherent problems with all of these screens and piano black and this kind of stuff that I don't care who the manufacturer is, you're still going to note it. There's a, there are a few haptic buttons going on. The steering wheel has some. The uh, touch controls for the lights over here and the controls for the sunroof are all haptic. They're also motion sensing and distance sensing. I know this because at one point I turned around to look into the back seat and the sunroof opened on its own because it sensed the top of my head. I don't need that. A button would be perfectly nice. So I'm starting here with the downsides because I want you guys to understand that every car has foibles. This car has them as well. Now let's talk about everything else about this car. We had an S580 before and it had the heads up display. I'm glad this one does not. The HUD actually comes out of this huge open trash can top behind this screen and I thought that actually cheapened up the cabin a lot. Not having that, I'll tell you two things. I don't miss having a HUD. I think that's fine. I don't need it. This gauge cluster is incredibly clear. But secondly, it takes away that hole in the dash that made this car seem cheaper on the inside. I like it better without it. The stereo in here is this Burmeister 4D with like 1800 watts of power and uh, you know 4100 speakers. I don't even know how many, but the point is it's got these tweeters that pop out here. It does sound very, very good. There's no point in me presenting that to you because you won't be able to understand it just on the way we're going to record it here. But you, if you, uh, you can change it to surround and special 4D surround and standard and there's all kinds of settings in here to make it do whatever you'd like it to do sound wise. It is quite impressive. You have all of this very, this very yacht like feel to all of the wood. Everything is incredibly high end. The seat is very comfortable. This is one of those cars. I don't say this often that I don't care how fast I drive. I don't. I, I mean, I, normally I'd be following these folks down this road and would be looking for the place to pass them as soon as the double yellow breaks. In this car, I don't care. I, I really don't. You're going to get to your destination. You're going to be plenty comfortable while you do it. However, you know what? We should pass just because, is there space? You have to see the power. Power is significant. I didn't love that pass, but it's done. Again, almost 500 horsepower, 496, and 516 pound-feet of torque, which is a lot, even in a car this big. You could hear it there when I really got into it. It actually did downshift. 
it's got plenty of power, but you just, I know this sounds weird, you just don't care. It's unnecessary. It's not something that when you drive this car, you think, well, I hope it's powerful. If you got the lesser version, I doubt you'd be disappointed in this car. If you could get all of the features of this upper level trim with less power, it's still in the mid 350s and mid 400s for torque, you would still really like this car. But of course, you have a dynamic button down here. I can go to Sport and Sport Plus in my big executive sedan. I don't need that actually, but it is there. That does exist. I can go back down into comfort. Guess what that feels like. Of course, there's Eco as well, but this is not a car you buy for its economy. As Mercedes has done with all of their recent cars, it does have that 48 volt starter generator that kind of assists this twin turbo. So it's just always a constant push of power. This has rear steer, 10 degrees of rear axle steering that does make this long car feel significantly shorter, especially at low speeds. Of course, that steers with you at high enough speeds, but at low speeds, it works opposite the front wheels and really does give this a pretty impressive tight turning radius, which is welcome when you're trying to navigate a parking lot. I've been very surprised when I've been backing out of tight spaces how easily this car will navigate it. Of course, all of the screens light up with all of your surround sound vision of everything near you, so there's no chance of you hitting something unless you really, really aren't paying attention. We've had this on a really cold week with blizzard conditions. This has sat outside my house and been completely covered in snow and ice, so bad that the wheels were bouncing because they were imbalanced with ice in the wheels. I mean, it's been a very bad week. This car fires right up instantly. The heated seats are right behind it. It warms up pretty fast. It's a comfortable place to be pretty much right away, which is very nice, especially when the temperature is like five, which has happened. I have noticed when it's very cold and you're at slow speeds, this suspension every now and then finds a little clunk. Okay, all right. I mean, in the extreme cold, every car is a little bit worse than it was when it was even a tiny bit warmer. You can see today it's about 40 degrees and this car is happy to do whatever. It wants to go cross country. This is like the old Volkswagen Phaeton I used to have. This is the ultimate road trip vehicle for you and family. Now the trunk is not huge. Four of you and a lot of gear, you're gonna to have to pack probably, you know, maybe one big suitcase and three carry-on size. There's not an enormous trunk, decent sized, but not nearly as big as you might want if you wanted to take a cross-country road trip. But a standard road trip, you'd have an amazing time anytime you put an executive in the back or anybody that wants to feel like an executive or you just want to pamper your date. I mean, they're gonna have an amazing time back there. I took my wife to dinner. She rode to dinner in the front seat she rode back from dinner in the back seat and learned all about the car. She had a great time. So there is a really nice event to being in this car, but even when you're driving it, that is true. This seat, the other thing that it does, it is also has inflatable bolsters and the bolster pushes into you opposite of the corner. So as I did that slight right, the left bolster was pushing in on my obliques there to kind of keep me pushed up in the seat. That's not something Mercedes pioneered that's existed in one way or another for a while, but of course it's here on this Mercedes. So it is simultaneously massaging me and keeping me upright. That seat is busy right now. Of course, heated, cooled, memory, everything you would like it to be, but this is the rare car where the back seats are better than the front seats. quiet in here. It's a very easy place to drive. You're not bothered by the driving, but you're also, it's, it's strange because nothing about this car makes me want to drive it hard. I just want to enjoy being here and have the seat massage me and listen to the amazing stereo and just feel like this is my cocoon to protect me from the world. It's felt extra profound this week when we've had a blizzard. Every time I've climbed in this car, it's been an amazing respite of just, it doesn't matter what the weather's doing outside. This is the place I want to be. And yet somehow I'm still not bored. The fact that I'm sitting here driving it, I actually want to drive this car. 
I don't necessarily only want to sit in the back. I'm perfectly happy driving it. I don't feel like I've been pushed out of the driving experience so much that all I want to be is coddled, which this car will do as well. I'm enjoying driving it. Of course, I like to drive, but I don't feel like I'm being kept at a distance, but I am being pampered. In fact, this car is too nice for me. I, I have to say it. This car is nicer than I deserve. I've been climbing out of it all week and realizing that I don't feel like I match the car. I, I'm too scruffy, I'm too unkempt, I have crazy hair. Why is that guy driving a loaded S-Class? And I am because I wanna share it with all of you. And I am because this is what we do for a living is we drive everything and this is very special. It's not for me. Now the question is, at 100 grand, would I get a G90? And the question behind that is, in five years, what is this S580 going for? What is the Genesis G90 going for? And how do they feel like they're holding up? I bet you, well taken care of, this S580 will feel classier in five to 10 years than the G90. I think the materials there are of lesser quality, even though brand new, that car feels amazing. I think this S580 will feel every bit as special in five or 10 years, but probably will have lost $100,000 in value, maybe more. So the question is, in five or 10 years, do we do another cheap luxury sedan challenge and do we get one of these S580s? What will they even cost? I'd take this on the salt flats. I mean, it'd ruin it, but I'd take it on the salt flats. I'd also take it on a, you know, let's load up the whole family and let's go on a trip. Of course, they're gonna like their life better than mine. The noise canceling headphones included are so good that I was able to play music up front while my wife had noise canceling headphones on in the back and listened to something different. Of course, at $160,000, they should be pretty good headphones. Oh, I didn't bring up the magic, magic visor control or whatever it is they call it. That is Mercedes' ridiculous name for this button right here, which is your washers. Magic vision control. This is, <laughs> you can see, it's actually really cool because they squirt out the windshield wiper fluid out of the actual blades themselves, which is a work of genius. I don't know why everybody doesn't do that. But apparently the car is actually measuring how dirty the windshield is, how fast you're going. It is calculate, calculating the exact amount of liquid to put upon the windshield. Measurements are going on, people. Procedures are happening. That's another thing this Mercedes does. It works very well. I mean, I, honestly, this is, this is some of the best windshield cleaning I've encountered. But I don't know that I needed a special name for it. Magic vision control. Yeah, okay. When I get to the light here, I'll see if there's anything I meant to tell you that I forgot. But the key thing is I'm being pampered at a level that is beyond my station. That's really the takeaway here. This is, this is more than I deserve. One ridiculous extra note, when we had the G90, I was actually kind of making fun of the fact that though it was very nice, I didn't think I needed the button on the center console to bring the door to me until I got this car, which doesn't do that. And I realized that door does open a long way and I'm sitting way back here in the seat and I have to lean out for the door. So maybe if I had a button to bring it to me, I would feel more comforted. There's a one column in the G90 box that, uh, yeah, they are, uh, they're winning there. Um, but uh, I can close my own door, I'll be okay. Don't worry about me. Sounds pretty good. That was partial throttle too. This is a wonderful place to be. It really is. For driver, for passenger, Mercedes has killed this, but Mercedes owns this part of the market. Mercedes is the standard bearer that shows everybody else what to do. And that's evidenced by how similar the current Genesis G90, which is also excellent, how similar it is to this car. 
just shows you how much everyone is looking at Mercedes and what they're going to do next. Well, this is what they're doing right now. The 2024 S580 4Matic without all the extra executive stuff, it's already 120 grand. This one is 159 and change. It feels very nice. If you were sitting here, you would probably want to have one in your life. Then you would look at the price. Then you would recalibrate what's actually necessary and probably decide as I did, it's really cool. It's not really for me, but I'll be sad to see it go because we have enjoyed this car very, very much. Mercedes knows what they're doing and they've done it again.